Here's something I just got my hands on, a Hamilton Model 915 Classroom Record Player. Uh, these are much more common in black, but as you can see, this one has kid designs on the case. We have our operating instructions in the lid, and our standard four-speed drive mechanism, as well as controls for power, pause, volume and tone, and our plastic tone arm with the 89T cartridge holder that's damaged. I'll have to replace that. Let's open this up and see what's on the inside. Here's our amplifier chassis, a fairly wimpy IC based amp, but it looks fairly well built, and as you can see the IC is mounted in a socket, so if it ever goes bad you can just simply unplug it and plug in a new one without having to unsolder it. The motor is a standard General Industries AC motor. In fact, this same basic drive mechanism was used for oh, about 30 years at least. But here's what's interesting. Look at the inspection or the final assembly date, January the 9th, 1997. And I've already looked at the date code on the motor and it's date coded 1996. So, you know, this is a awfully new record player to still have an AC drive motor in it. Uh, I know Califone switched to DC motors around 88 or 89 or so. Now, personally, I like the AC motors better. They're a lot more reliable, and about all they ever need is cleaning and lubricating. The DC motors, after a while, they'll fail and just wear out and finding replacements can be sometimes difficult. Now, the main thing that I know of that's wrong with this is the 89T cartridge holder is broken and will have to be replaced. But let's plug it up and give the amp the finger touch and see if I can get a buzz out of the speaker. Okay. Okay, we're passing the buzz test, so that tells us that the tells us that the amplifier is working. So let's let's examine the tone arm cartridge and do what we have to do to fix that. So we have two things wrong here. The little flip lever is broken off of the holder and the wire is broken there. So I think I have an extra 89T cartridge holder. I'm going to just change the whole thing out and be done with it. And then we'll try to play a record on it. Okay, here's our new 89T cartridge holder installed in place. And let me give you a little service tip whenever you're soldering the wires to one of these. If you have a dud 89T cartridge, it's no good. Just plug it into the holder, and that will keep the terminals from moving and while you're soldering, because sometimes these holders are not the best quality, and the plastic will literally melt if you're not careful when soldering the wires on and having a dud cartridge inserted in the holder kind of helps prevent that. However, don't use a good cartridge because you could damage the cartridge. Now let me say just a word or two about 89T cartridges. This is an aesthetic 89T cartridge. Uh, they were in use from probably the mid to late 1950s up until 2006, 7, 8, somewhere around there, so, so say a good 40 years that these were used in classroom record players. The reason they were used is because they were cheap and durable. If the tone arm was accidentally dropped to the degree that the cartridge would be damaged, you didn't have to physically replace the cartridge. You could just unplug this little assembly and plug in a new unit and you were good to go. The whole cartridge and needle is one replaceable unit. And back in the day they didn't cost much more than a standard needle. In fact up until the late 90's, early 2000's I was buying 89T's from the local parts house for I think five dollars and seventy-five cents each and they always had them in stock because the school system was buying them. Well, in the early 2000s, the school district discontinued the use of records and got rid of all of their record players. 
so the parts house quit stocking the cartridges and then eventually they stopped making their traditional dual sided cartridge which means one tip on one side for LP one tip on the other side for 78 in today's world these type of cartridges are getting scarce you can still on occasion find new old stock dual tipped cartridges but you can figure on paying about twenty five dollars a piece minimum what's currently being made is you either have a red single tipped LP cartridge for about seventeen bucks or a green seventy eight cartridge for about fifteen bucks so what that means is you have to physically unplug and swap cartridges around for the different types of records being played and you're spending over thirty dollars for two different cartridges and that's just something you have to keep up with now, I don't like that idea because there's just too much risk of damage with switching cartridges out they need to start making the old style 89T cartridges again with, a, with an LP tip on one side and a 78 tip on the other and they need to start making the mounting brackets again in fact I just used my last mounting bracket and the voice of music site no longer has them Ed Crockett may still have some now there is an alternative to that cartridge that I will likely be using in the future once I see how well it works and that alternative is this Tetrad mono cartridge available from thevoiceofmusic.com it's supposed to put out conservatively 0.7 volts and the 89T puts out between 1 and 1.3 volts I can tell you that the uh, Fansteel P228 which is a stereo cartridge will work in these types of players but it doesn't work very well because its output is only something like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 volts and I know that doesn't seem like much but in the world of record players it is the cartridge will work but your output will be weaker and your tonal quality won't be as good so unless they start making dual tipped 89T's and, and cartridge holders I'm probably going to have to start using this cartridge. Now this cartridge is about 28 bucks but when the needle fails all you have to replace is a needle that costs five or six bucks. When one of these expensive PowerPoint cartridges fail in today's world you're back to spending twenty five dollars for a a new cartridge and I just don't like that idea every time the needle wears out and by the way what's readily available now for the PowerPoint cartridges contains sapphire tip needles which don't last nearly as long as the diamond tip needles supplied with this Tetrad cartridge so yeah if the 89T's were still say no more than ten dollars a piece it would probably probably be worth just keeping the original cartridge design but since they're so expensive and getting scarce and since they're not likely to make any new ones then we're probably going to have to do something else in the future and there we go all I have to do now is attach this wire where it won't be hanging out from under the tone arm probably a little Elmer's glue will help that problem <laughs> That's it. Doesn't sound too bad for such a wimpy amplifier. Now I will have to replace that cartridge because the one that's in there came out of my friend's caliphone player and he said it was starting to sound bad so I installed a new red one-sided LP needle for him today since he never plays 78's on his. That's it with a 78. Okay, back on the record player, and there's something else I'd like to address. The issue of record skipping. Now, on my older classroom record players from the 50s through the 80s that use metal tone arms, I really don't have a problem with record skipping. 
even records with a lot of bass like uh, Vogue by Madonna and I keep this record for that very reason to test the compliance of record players uh, on the metal tone arms the record plays just fine however on this plastic tone arm you can see it doesn't track worth a darn now I know this needle is not in the best of shape but I've seen the exact same thing happen with brand new needles and also this doesn't do well with 45 RPM records that are pressed on polystyrene in fact it you can hear it chewing them up instantly so I think just as an experiment this is as good a time as any to install our Tetrad cartridge which should be a more compliant cartridge than this 89T and maybe it'll do better in this little cheap plastic tone arm than the 89T cartridge will do so let's do that now now the Tetrad cartridge contains a half inch mounting bracket and it's possible to mount the cartridge to that bracket in a variety of positions so the first thing you want to do before removing the old cartridge is determine the approximate position of the stylus tip and mark it on the tone arm I just use my soldering iron just to put a very tiny mark there so I want to position the new needle as close in line with that mark as I possibly can okay we have the tetrad cartridge installed and it's not quite as hot as the 89T cartridge however it's still plenty hot enough to give reasonable results out of this little puny amplifier and as you can also hear the the needle is not jumping across the record and now we're playing a polystyrene 45 and unlike the other cartridge this cartridge doesn't appear to be uh, wrecking this record on the first play now like I might have already said, I wouldn't recommend playing a Styrene 45 on such a player over and over again, but still, it, it shouldn't wreck the uh, record on the first play. By the way, that's the flip side of help me make it through the night. Okay, now let's look at what we might can do to get a little more gain out of this amp to compensate for the slightly cooler cartridge that we have installed now. Here's our cartridge shunt resistor. This resistor is connected across the cartridge and reading across it on the ohm meter it reads 82,000 ohms which that's that's a little bit on the low side uh, the resistor in that RCA Scholastic record player was 270k ohms and you know it was kind of tinny and weak even with an 89T cartridge and I jumped it up to a 1.5 mega ohm resistor so I think we'll do the same thing with this set I will remove this resistor and then I will use my resistor decade box to substitute in various values of resistors and see which one works the best and whichever one works the best is what we'll go with okay the resistor was actually a hundred K ohm but since it was in parallel with other circuit elements that's the reason it read lower but anyway I removed the resistor completely and it has plenty of volume and decent tonal quality now okay here it is with the 100 K ohm resistor in place there it is without sounds much better and there we are with an LP see it's 
got so much gain now you get feedback when you turn the volume all the way up which is fairly common with these types of players Here we are with an old worn out Ethel Merman 78. On express, I hate parading, my serenading. And another nice thing about the Tetrad cartridge is with the 89T, when you flipped from one needle to the other, you were actually rotating the cartridge holder, which placed stress on the wires where they're soldered to the holder. In fact, I've fixed many of these classroom record players where the wires were broken off from the cartridge holder. But on this one, the cartridge doesn't flip, the needle itself flips, so there's no stress on the cartridge wiring. So yeah, I think as far as future use, if we're going to repair these types of players that use one volt cartridges, we're going to have to learn how to modify them to use something more modern and as far as any cartridges that were made recently this tetrad seems to be about the only one that's available that puts out close to a volt output and even at that you still may have to modify your amplifier to get the most gain out of it in this particular situation all we had to do was remove the shunt resistor across the cartridge but you know, there are many different designs of amplifiers, so what has to be done might vary from one record player to another. You might have to just simply remove that resistor. You might have to increase the value of that resistor. You might have to add a bypass capacitor to the emitter of the preamp stage if it's a transistor set or if it's a tube set to the cathode of the driver tube it's but usually it's just not really that difficult to do you just need a little bit of electronics experience and know a little bit of know a little bit about amplifiers to kind of take it as it comes so to speak Here's the old Al Jolson 78 that's cracked and worn out, but it seems to be in, seems to sound better than the last one. Okay, there you go. That's about all I've got for the Hamilton record player. Okay, we have a little issue with the Hamilton record player that I just now picked up on. When you have a stereo compatible cartridge installed in a mono record player, whether it be a for real mono cartridge that's stereo compatible or a stereo cartridge with the left and right channels wired in parallel, then it is supposed to reproduce both channels of a stereo recording and combine those channels to produce mono output from the speaker. Well, I was playing some stereo records and I knew something didn't sound just quite right. So I dug up a record with parts of it that's good stereo separation that I could recognize. This is the record I'm talking about, Led Zeppelin II and I played that record on this machine and I could tell that that one channel was not being reproduced for example this cartridge is either only outputting the left or the right channel of the record it's not combining the left and right to produce a mono signal so I took the same record and played it on one of my Califone record players. It still has the original mono 89T cartridge in it and both channels were combined for mono and I could tell that both channels were coming out of the speaker on the record player. I'll now demonstrate what I'm talking about. Okay, I have it queued up to the part I want you to hear. Now, pay close attention. Now 
And did you hear how the what you first heard the from one channel sounded loud and clear? The second bit that normally would come through the other channel sounded very weak, like it was non-existent or close to being non-existent. Well, that's because this cartridge is only outputting one of the stereo channels. Now, let me play the same passage on the on the caliphone, and you'll you'll hear what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, as you can hear on this particular cartridges, cartridge, not cartridges, both channels, left and right channels, are being combined into a mono signal, and both channels are actually being heard in mono out of the speaker here. We're not just hearing either the left or the right channel, we're hearing both channels, and that's the way it should be. So I don't know what the deal is with that Tetrad cartridge. I've I've tried. I used a four-wire harness on the Tetrad cartridge and combined the left and right channels with a four-wire harness, and there was still no improvement. So apparently the other two, the other two connections on the Tetrad cartridge are not being used. So I think that particular cartridge is just outputting one channel. They don't have the left and right combined, so that cartridge might not be such a good choice unless all you intend to play are mono recordings. Okay, I tried this new stereo Tetrad cartridge, which is a modern fan steel replacement. I've had mixed luck with those in the past. And unfortunately, it didn't do too well in this player. It sounded very tinny and skipped all over the place. So, reluctantly, I put the the mono tetrad back in here that only that only recognizes one channel. And I guess we're just going to have to live with that for the time being. I hate doing things that way, but as I believe Joe Simon once said, it bees that way sometimes. Okay, I think we might finally have this problem solved. I revisited the uh, new Tetrad cartridge that I had. and I think the reason it didn't work before was, number one, I was flustered whenever I was installing it. Uh, number two, these newer Tetrads are not wired like the older ones, or so they say. Well, I've actually ran into some new ones that weren't. Well, perhaps this one had a little age on it because I wired it like the new ones are wired and it sounded like crap and skipped all over the place. I think the skipping was because the needle possibly wasn't seated in the yoke properly. Well, I rewired the cartridge like a conventional old-style Tetrad and it seems to work fine now. And I'm actually hearing both channels of the of the recording. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot better, isn't it? I really don't think it's any hotter than this so-called mono tetrad, or, or any colder, I should say. So probably what I'm going to do in the future is I'm not going to worry about these mono tetrads. If all they're going to reproduce is one half of the signal. Now, there could be a defect with this cartridge, I don't know, but I think in the future I'm going to just order traditional stereo Tetrad cartridges and wire them for mono. And now, I didn't bother replacing the whole wiring harness since I already had the mono when glued in. I just simply, I just simply wired a stereo Tetrad plug up here at the end here and, and just tucked everything in and it works fine. And I just sent an email to Gary to let him know what my findings were with the mono cartridge, this animal right here. We just see what he has to say. But in, until then, if I need any mono cartridges, I'll just order a conventional stereo cartridge and 
wire it for mono, I'm, I'm not going to trust these unless it's proven that this cartridge is just defective. However, it won't be a total washout. I'll use this cartridge in one of my talking book players that will never see a stereo record, so you know it won't be a total waste. But here we go. This one, I hope, is finally fixed up and ready to go. So with that said, more to come later, and I really mean that this time. I don't plan on revisiting this thing again. Mm -hmm.